Hey guys, uh, I wanted to share the latest project I've been working on uh, this summer. This is the LR80 long range wing. This is a an 80 inch wingspan uh, EPP wing. It's based uh, loosely on the Defiant 66, um, but with a few changes. So we've got um, removable outer wing panels. We've got uh, just um, outboard elevons on both sides. We've got a fiberglass cowling here, uh, which houses all the electronics, the batteries, um, and the payload bay for a mapping camera or something of that sort. Uh, this is a 6S build. So I'm running a, uh, a big old badass 4520-370 kV. Uh, currently spinning a 1710 prop. We've got uh, two configurable external uh, electronics bays, one for video gear, one for um, RX and uh, GPS with cooling vents. Um, the idea with this wing is to build a large, efficient wing that can carry uh, a lot of payload and a lot of battery. And um, the goal for this light, uh, for this wing is um, in the neighborhood of an hour and a half to two hours of flight time. This, again, this is just a fiberglass bearing uh, with an aqueduct here in the top to cool the ESC uh, and back to the motor. Inside, um, you can see we just have a couple of magnets here that are holding the top down. We've got a printed motor mount. The um, Hobby Wing Platinum 80 amp ESC, the old school uh, Pixhawk 1 in here, which is just a placeholder until I get a new flight controller in. Uh, we're powering this with a pair of 6S 8400 milliamp hour uh, lithium ion packs, running those in parallel for 16,800 milliamp hours total. Uh, total power. This section um, is intended and will be cleaned up, but is intended to be the payload area. So we could mount, say, a mapping camera or some other downward facing sensor in this area. Um, this area is actually right on the CG line, so um, it really doesn't matter what we're putting in here. It's not going to affect balance. In fact, if we don't carry any payload at all, we're just looking for endurance, we could put a third one of these packs. We'll fit right in here. Uh, we can run three packs. Um, right now, we're looking at about an hour and a half of flight time. But with the third pack, we should easily be able to get over two hours of flight time. So this is the onboard video bay. So we had a lot of room. Uh, I went ahead and just mounted the antennas inside here. So we can use either 1.2 or 1.3 um, or 5.8. We've got the 1.3 uh, VTX in here and the 5.8. And because we're using the old Pixhawk, um, I'm running a minimum OSD in here until we get everything changed around. Um, pretty simple system. This is the video and the power. So if we plug it into this outlet here, we end up with uh, 1.2. And in this one, if I plug it in here, we have 5.8. So pretty simple. Cooling is provided by a large duct up here in the front. And there's a NACA duct underneath. And I'll show you that in a minute. That air comes in, comes across all of the equipment, and then comes out here in the back and exits out this louvered exhaust vent here in the back. And uh, we have the same thing on both sides. The other side is just um, a TBS Nano Pro uh, RX and a uh, small Maytec com uh, compass and GPS unit. Okay, taking a closer look at the bottom of the wing. You can see we've got the two NACA ducts that I spoke about earlier uh, down here on the high pressure side of the wing. That's allowing venting into the two electronics bays. Um, we've got a couple of printed TPU skids um, just to keep the, the nose off the ground. 
We've got this larger printed uh, fairing here, and this is really to protect the motor uh, on landings because the motor does hang down below the bottom of the wing, so we wanted to protect that. Uh, these are the bottoms of the battery bay, the electronic, or the camera bay, um, and then what you're seeing here is a hook for a bungee launch, and uh, there'll be more on that later. Um, there's little bits of grass in here. This is a post-maiden um, walk around. So this is what it looked like um, after some interesting launch attempts and uh, three or four really successful test flights. Okay, so let's take a look at the outer wing panels. Um, we have on the end here, we've got the printed winglets and these are just printed in PLA. And then um, they're just held on with a couple of screws uh, that go into some uh, captured nuts and a flange, kind of a nut, uh, flange plate that's um, glued to the end of the wing. And then we have the um, just balsa elevons. And then this is a printed cover to cover up and protect the servo and the linkage. And it also acts as uh, kind of a landing skid. Uh, on the end, where we made up, we have an uh, MPX connector, a six-pin MPX connector. Um, these are the carbon fiber tubes that uh, slots that these tubes slide into to mount, uh, to join to the main wing body. And then we have magnets on both sides, uh, front and rear here, and then front and rear over on the fuselage that hold the wing panels on. All right, so let's take a closer look at how these mount wings, uh, wing panels mount. We're just using a 10 millimeter carbon fiber tube here and a shorter one up front for alignment. And those are sliding into 12 millimeter carbon fiber tubes that are embedded in the wing uh, and out on the outer wing panel. Then all we do is just line up the holes And magnets take care of the rest, and the electrical connections are mated up. Now it's time for the maiden. Well, that didn't go so well, so let's try it with a little stronger headwind. And that didn't go much better. So we're gonna switch out the 16 by 12 prop and try a 1710. And again, not much better. At this point, I've decided I'm gonna go ahead and try a bungee launch. Remember that little hook I had on the bottom of the wing? That's what that's for. But I also needed a taller launch tower. And since I was headed to feet meet, I figured I could use Swiss Freak himself. And Slowjet looks pretty excited about it. Now bungee launching something this size is still no easy feat, especially when you've never done it before. But with some tweaks to our technique and some trimming to the wing, we seem to get it pretty consistent. The added height of the new launch tower certainly didn't hurt. Thanks a lot, Frank. See if you can get the nose up on it too when you let it go. Oh, and Mike's direction, of course.
Overall, I'm very happy with the results. It flies very stable. It's very maneuverable. It can cruise 45, 50 miles an hour at about eight amps. I do still have a lot of flight testing to do, and I already have several upgrades that I'm thinking of trying. So if you're interested in this project, then follow along and we'll see how far we can take it.